Hey everybody, ever since this video was released over a year ago, I've received a lot of requests of, almost on a monthly basis to produce a video showing me actually scoring a film. And perhaps the process that I take or the approach that I use, uh, maybe about the software or hardware that I use in the scoring process, um, I really didn't know how to do that. I, it's been the, kind of the thing that, that's, that's kept me from doing it the most. Um, but I decided that I'm just going to do it. I'm, this is got, going to be a very polished video. It's going to be kind of rough and tumble. Um, it just so happens that I am, am almost done scoring a web series called Grimoire Valia by a director by the name of Ash Arnes. And I've worked a lot with Ash before. And the thing I like about working with him is that he's a musician himself. And so he's got a really good sensibility, musically wise, as far as what he wants from his composers. Um, he knows what he wants conveyed emotionally, and he knows he knows how music can do that. And it's it's a really kind of a, a, a treat to work with someone who understands how music works in film. A lot of times when we're sitting in a spotting session, where we discuss where we want music and, and where we don't want music, and you know he'll actually have ideas musically for me. Uh, well, you know, I, I like even even down to the instrumentation, uh, which is great because it, it it saves me from having to second guess his intentions. It saves me the heart the headache of reinterpreting reinterpreting a scene in a way that he doesn't want interpreted that way. So, uh, all in all, I think that this uh, is going to be. Um, uh, I think it, so. This would be a prime time to do this. In fact, just today. He sent me in an email the fifth episode, the final episode of Grimoire Valia. Um, and so what, I, what my plans are is to, to take and uh, kind of escort you through my, my process. And now this is going to be really quick because um, this is Monday. Uh, he, wants to, he wants to release this, this episode on Friday. So that gives me roughly two days because this is, this is Monday evening. And um, so we'll see how this works. Uh, I've never done this before. I, I don't, I'm not making any promises. This is going to be a very well produced video. But I thought, I, you know, what the heck, let's go, let's go for it. So um, I'll have to go to work. And I have a spotting session with him tomorrow morning at his house. And then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Hey everybody, I'm just on my way home from the director's house. We just had a spotting session and it went really well. Took a lot of notes and um, he uh, went over parts where he wants music and where he doesn't want music and even th the type of music he's looking for, which is really helpful. Um, this particular episode has a lot of action in it, so there's not going to be a, a lot of room for melodic development. Uh, it's mostly in my mind right now, I'm just thinking probably a lot of bombastic battle combat music or whatever, I don't know. But um, I've only seen it twice now. I saw it last night before I went to work. I saw it this morning at the spotting session. But already there's a lot of ideas forming in my head as far as to what I want to do musically with this. Um, mostly rhythmic and instrumentation wise. Um, but uh, we'll see. So what I want to do now is I want to sit down and we'll, we'll, we'll watch it together. And then uh, I'll discuss my ideas of what I want to do, and then see if that actually pans out. Um, sometimes my first impressions aren't what actually ends up happening on the screen, um, but we'll see. Well, here I am in the studio, and we're going to watch the time code version of the episode, and I'll give my impressions of what I intend on doing musically. These are going to be very vague at the moment because this is this will be my third time watching it now but um, it'll give you an idea of, the, of some of the ideas that I have for it um, I do have my notes here and um, from the spotting session so that'll help uh, as we go but um, I'm just gonna play it through straight through and um, we'll uh, discuss what what goes on so oh, by the way if you haven't already done so please stop right now and go to Ashfire Films YouTube channel and watch, and here's a link to it, and watch the first four episodes 
of Grimoire Valia. That way you're going to be up to speed on what's going on with number 5. Don't watch number 5 because I'm sure that by the time this video gets finished, number 5 will be already posted. Um, so just don't watch 5, wait until you after you've seen this one. So. Well, I'm going to get started on this. I'm just going to hit start and hit play. Now, musically, this this is this is a, exactly the same type of music that was happening at the end of four. It's a con continuation, same eerie kind of vibe. Uh, this witch is 200 years old and she's been dead all this all this time, and so there's this kind of this, this eerie kind of thing about it. And it's slowly kind of building as they're talking. I'm not a believer. Pity. Are not. Take your boy and leave. We're not leaving. And you're no goddess. And right here there's there's gonna be a hit. And it's where there's some sort of fireball or something landing and then she appears. And this is where I'm coming up with an idea for having a continually kind of a percussive um, instrument uh, instrumentation. And right there there's they recognize each other I guess from earlier. He guess he's really old. And um, there, he wanted a recognition type of, of a of a of a um, theme, and then it continues this bombastic type of, of thing. Lots of brass, lots of percussion, lots of of, of type of flourishes with the strings. Um, and I mean, I, evidently she's throwing fireballs or lightning or something, but. Um, so I have to kind of just use my imagination at this point. I'm sure the special effects are going to be nice because Ash does a really good job. Now there is there's supposed to be a reaction here when she gets blown on, and as she waves her hand, there's some fire coming out of there. At this point, I'm going to be I, I, in my mind again. Um, I'm going to continue the same vibe with the same type of um, percussive driving rhythm, but now. After that, that, that little bit there where they're talking, it's going to be more intense. Different instrumentation probably, but a little more intense. And when he comes out and draws his sword, I think I'll have some, some very minor uh, little theme going on. While she collects herself and they start battling it out again. He's drawing his thing. Um, same type of music. I'll see how I, I handle underscoring their dialogue, because if you have too much percussive stuff and you just do ducking, it doesn't work as well. Um, so I might have to do some actual timing within their dialogue so that, that it's not quite so loud or busy or percussive or whatever. Now when he slaps down the parchment there, there's supposed to be a, a hit. And then a change of mood here. Um, they're going to get ready to do this, this banishing parchment thing. And it's got its own theme. That's it's a little that's that's going to be kind of a, I imagine, overlaid over the top of the other thing. Now, this I guess she's getting sucked into the banishing parchment, and she disappears. It'll. I'm sure that the special effects will be great for that. But um. <clears throat> so now, it's done, but it's not quite. So obviously, this is going to be different. It'll it'll be more. It'll. There'll still be music here, but it'll be very kind of subdued and, and eerie. Like it's not quite, you know, she's not, I mean, yes, she's dead, but there's going to be, you know, there's something else happening here. And so he goes back over to the sarcophagus. Um, at this point, I really don't know what kind of music I'm going to be adding here, but I'm hoping it'll be good. I'm hoping it adds to rather than detracts from it. Um, as I say, this all this stuff is going to be vague, and I might change. Who knows? It'll only come to pass after I I uh, start each each cue. And I think that, that we wanted to have some sort of a of a of a reaction when he opens up the lid and pulls out this piece of paper, which is supposed to be sparkly and shimmering and and bright. What's that? And I have s some ideas for what I'm going to do there. But he has, but then right here at the very end, there's supposed to be a percussive hit, because it's it's like he doesn't know what it is, but it adds to the the, the mystery and, and it makes you want to keep on watching, um, which is I think the whole idea behind this. So there that is. Um, I'm going to just just get started on the first um, cue, and we'll take it from there. So here I am in my little humble home studio, 
and I'm getting ready to start the, 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 the scoring process. Um, just wanted to take a little note though. Normally if I have time and adequate time to do, do this type of thing, I will, I will score manually. I, I like to write out the music. And the thing I use the most is this right here. Um, this is a little film score template that I created, um, and it's based on one you can buy from the, I, you can buy online, I think. But it has spaces for you can you can make screenshots of individual frames where things start to happen, actions happening on the screen, and then you have a description of what's happening, and then below here you've got um, staff. Uh, lines that you can actually write out score some of the notes. Uh, give yourself jot ideas and it helps helps me at least develop ideas a little bit better than just thinking about them and um, coming up with them really quick. Um, but I don't have time for this so most of what I'm going to be doing um, during this, this scoring process is organized improvisation. Okay, I'm going to go over a little bit of my equipment that I use real quick. I'm sorry for the mess. Um, I'm in kind of a rush here. Um, this is my Tascam FW1082. It is a it's an eight track, eight channel audio interface. It's FireWire interface. Um, so it lets me record simultaneously eight tracks at once. Um, it also is a really good control surface, and that's what I use it primarily as. I have a lot of my my system audio routed through it, but um, but it, it's really good as a control surface, and I use it m mainly with Logic. All right, this is my uh, MIDI controller. This is a Korg uh, Triton LE, and although it has its own internal sounds and it has its own sequencer and sampler, I don't use it really for that. I just basically use it as a um, as a controller for the sounds that are in my computer. Speaking of my computer, this is my computer. This is a Mac Mini, and I, you wouldn't think so, but this little thing puts out a lot of, of power. Um, I can, I can uh, power both of my HD monitors, and also does all sorts of great job with editing HD video. Uh, I can throw a lot of, of musical instruments at it, it's fine uh, when I'm in my software. It also, um, uh, it's got eight gigs, of, eight gigs of RAM, and uh, I really, actually, very personally, very surprised on how well it works. Um, I would prefer a, a 12 core Mac, but yeah, Mac Pro, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. So anyway, that's that's my setup for here. Um, everything goes up to this this um, stereo receiver, um, which is powering these two MTX shelf speakers. Now, you wouldn't believe it, but those are actually some of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard. Um, they beat almost every near-field monitor I've ever heard in my life. They have an incredible flat response, um, and the mid-range mid tone, the mid-range frequencies is where all the magic happens anyway when you mix. Um, you don't want something that's going to be too bassy. You don't want something that's going to have too much trouble. You want something that has a very flat, even frequency response. Um, I have mixed almost everything I've done with them, and I couldn't be happier.